Hey y'all, it's Kirsten and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about all of the injuries that I racked up as a dancer and in hindsight, what I could have done differently to better avoid some of these injuries and for the ones that just were gonna happen, like sometimes we're not perfect, we are going to experience an injury. So I also wanna give some tips on if you're dealing with an injury, how to better care for yourself to successfully recover and avoid entering this vicious cycle of injury and re-injury because I've been there, it is so not pretty. And if you're going through an injury right now, this is just a taste of the Comeback Stronger course content. That's the online program I'm launching this November 13th. And this online program is geared towards walking injured dancers through the process of making a successful recovery with confidence because I know from experience how confused Using the recovery process can be how lonely and isolating you can um, or the isolation you can experience during that time and the emotional pain can be intense sometimes so this course has five modules all about addressing the main confusions concerns and pain points of the injury so that you can really make a strong comeback and it's also paired with a facebook community so that you don't have to deal with that loneliness and isolation that really makes the injury process so much worse for dancers than it needs to be so um, i'm going to talk more about the course at the end of this video so stay tuned for that if you are injured you're not going to want to miss it i'm also going to be talking about um, an invitation I have for 100 dancers. It's a special promotion I'm running to celebrate the launch of the course. So um, again, if you're injured, stay tuned all the way through the end of the video. I know not all of you are injured, so let's get on to talking about all my injuries and the advice I have learned and picked up over the years of dealing with them. So what is the laundry list of injuries? I have them written down on my computer because Lord knows I cannot remember them all. Well, I could, but do I want to take the time to memorize all of them? No, I don't really want to focus on that. So um, let's see. Let's start out with um, the fact that I dislocated my kneecap or my patella, technically, three times when I was 14, 16, and 18. So it was like a vicious two-year cycle. Next, I have, by extension, torn my patellar tendon in the same knee many times. I don't even know technically how many times. I think it's just been kind of in a constant state of being torn for years. Um, and of course, like related to that tearing, there were times when it was just tendonitis. There were times when it was like a almost a 50% tear in my tendon. So yeah, my right knee has really it needs some love. It has um, bared a lot of burdens. We'll just say that. Also in that right knee, um, there was a lot of different injuries going on just kind of all at the same time. So when people ask me like, oh, what happened to your knee? I'm like, uh, oh, like, where do I start? Do you really want to know? Do you have five minutes? Because it's a couple things. Um, and so one of the things that was causing me a lot of pain was chondromalacia, which is basically when your kneecap doesn't really, your patella, it doesn't really sit exactly where it should in the groove. So that's called, for me, it's patella alta. My patella is too high up. It's not really sitting in the groove that it should be sitting in. So since it's been too high up, it's really too close to the head of my femur and it's been rubbing against the bone, which has shredded some of the cartilage beneath the patella and above the head of my femur. So basically when I got a surgery to clear that shiz out, it looked like a fur carpet was down there. Technically, your cartilage should be pretty smooth, and so I had to get an arthroscopic surgery to clear up all the fraying of the cartilage, and that did actually reduce some of my pain because some of that the frayed cartilage was just getting pinched. It was really hurting. I've also slightly torn my meniscus before. I've slightly torn my ACL. I've dislocated my fibula on the same leg, which is the, it's the second shin bone. So there's the tibia, the main shin bone, and then the fibula is the one to the outside of your shin uh, or calf, I guess you could say. And so 
that fibula, it kind of rotates like this um, and it can easily kind of slip out of place. So mine slipped out of place and it caused some wicked peroneal tendonitis and some ankle problems. It was really painful. Like it was hard to walk, jumping and being on releve was like borderline impossible, but you better believe I was trying to do it. Actually at the time, my teacher kind of forced me to perform. Like she, I told her about my injury and she's like, well, you have to do it anyway. And I just did. It was not nice. I've also partially dislocated my right shoulder. I've got some pictures of that. I will show on the screen. That was so painful. <laughs> so my, it was just a partial dislocation, like I said. So it slipped forward and it rotated in. So one arm was three inches longer than the other. I sprained like all the muscles at the back of my shoulder here. It was a mess, like I had to hold my arm, I didn't have a little brace deal. It was a wreck. I've also pulled both hamstrings pretty badly a few different times, like to the point where I could hear it pop, uh, like the tendinous attachment, like the top of your hamstring muscle goes into a tendon which will attach to um, the bone, I believe, like the ischial tuberosity, the sits bone, I think I'm correct there. It's been a while since I've taken kinesiology. But anyway, so I could feel the tendon at the top of the muscle snap. I could hear it pop, I could feel it, and I couldn't really bend down for a couple days. And uh, yeah, that really hurt. And those hamstring pulls, man, they take a long time to get over. It's like just one of those things that pretty much only time can, can fix. I tried dry needling and that was a massive disaster. I've never, ever liked dry needling. I've also had a uh, pretty bad Achilles tendonitis as a teenager and tendonitis in different parts of my calves, which made it really hard to jump. Um, I've misplaced a couple ribs, making it pretty hard to breathe or bend or doing it, do an arabesque. I've also um, had tendonitis in my hips. I had this random um, bout of bursitis in my bunion. That was a lot of bees. And basically bursas are like fluid sacs to help pad your joints and you have i think all of us we have one at the tip of our bunions like near our big toe so mine just popped out of nowhere in college and it was the middle of winter i couldn't really wear normal shoes so i had to wear a sandal in the middle of winter in utah it was, it was a hoot. So most of these injuries weren't drastic enough to uh, require invasive treatments or um, lots of time off, but the knee injury definitely took the cake as the most severe thing I ever went through. It was very difficult. Um, I had struggled with knee injuries at this point for over 10 years at currently at this point in my life. Like I still have to deal with it sometimes. I'm still getting my quad stronger again after all this time. Um, but I am able to dance, so that's exciting. Mostly pain-free too, so yay! I'm so grateful for that, but it has been a journey because actually this knee injury is the thing that um, caused me to step away from my professional career in dance, which at the time had basically just started. So it was very hard for me, and it that difficult time definitely created a passion in me to provide help for dancers who are like me and who are going through similar things. Let's move on to what I would tell you guys who are going through similar things in order to better avoid injuries, uh, recover from an injury better if you are going through one, and in order to take care of yourself well enough to avoid a cycle of re-injury. So the first thing I really, really want to share with you guys is the encouragement to focus on nailing the fundamentals of technique. I highly encourage you guys to focus on being strong and using the turnout that you have and learning how to use your muscles to turn out properly without just using force to get your heels forward or gripping on the bar and rolling in on your arches in order to turn out. That puts so much stress on your joints that over the years, like maybe your young body can deal with that like mine did, but when you get older, you are going to shave off probably years of your uh, ability to enjoy dancing because it's like everything we do, it does have a consequence on our bodies. I think when we're young, we can just 
say like, oh, I'll be fine. Oh, I'll get over it. Like, oh, the pain will go away. It has before. But if you keep ignoring pain as a sign to better take care of yourself, if you just ignore that sign and just keep pushing anyway, you will pay for it eventually like me. So I really wish that when I was younger, I listened to the handful of teachers I had who were telling me to be more modest with my turnout. They were telling me which muscles to use in order to turn out proper, properly. But at the time, my teenage brain was just like, this is humiliating. Why are you telling me that I can't turn out like everyone else in this class? So I wasn't willing to kind of humble myself for a bit to get truly strong and build a good foundation of technique that would not only make me a better dancer, but it would protect my joints from further damage in the future. So no matter if you are currently not injured, um, or you're going through an injury right now, it is never too late in your journey to put all of your energy on focusing on building your fundamental technique, your proper placement, so that you make sure you are doing your movements out of a place of strength and alignment in your joints so that certain parts of your joints aren't getting more pressure on them than they should. I also really wish that I had started Pilates earlier. I think this is, well, this is something I recommend to all dancers. Start doing mat Pilates as soon as you can in your career. Um, and if you're lucky enough to have this available to you, do reformer Pilates. Both are absolutely wonderful for um, building long lean muscle mass. That not only looks great, it helps you stay in shape, it's a fantastic way of cross training, but it's low impact exercise that not only um, allows you to be stronger, but it, it's not like a way of getting stronger that actually exhausts your joints further after a long day of dancing. I found that for me, Pilates was only one of the only ways that I could really cross train without um, adding more stress to my body. And what I particularly love about Pilates, especially reformer Pilates, is that it's fantastic for resistance training to develop strength in your entire range of motion. So you're not just going to be like, for instance, for instance, if I'm doing a bicep curl, it's not just the kind of exercise that builds strength like in this position, you're going to build strength in your entire range of motion. You get to be strong in a more extreme expanded positions, which is very similar to ballet. You need to be strong when you're at the very end of your joint's capacity. I've heard it said that in the last 10% of your range of motion is where at least 90% of injuries happen. So you need to be developing basic strength um, in your entire range of motion in order to protect yourself. The next thing I would recommend to everybody is to really look into your nutrition and make sure that you're meeting all of your nutritional needs. Don't just think that nutrition is happening adequately for you if you look skinny enough. Being healthy and being skinny are two different things. I'm very passionate about separating that in our perception. When I was young, I was very skinny and I was trying to be really skinny. And, and so what I would do is I was so fixated on low calorie foods. What I ended up doing is excluding healthy fats from my diet, which really screwed me over in my puberty. So I was not um, eating enough fats for my brain health, the health of my body and my joints. Um, and I was not eating enough fats for my hormone health as well. And fats are so crucial to, well, they're just a crucial part of having adequate nutrition for your body. Your body needs it to function. And I was not providing um, adequate sources of fat and other essential vitamins and nutrients to my diet. I never got my blood tested, so I was kind of oblivious um, to as to whether or not I was deficient in certain nutrients, but I'm sure I was. So I wasn't supplementing my diet, um, and I wasn't eating uh, all the different types of food that I should have in order to be well. I was just focused on being thin, and I know that really took a toll on my body's overall health, and probably created um, fertile ground for injuries to come up. The next thing I would tell my younger self and all of you is to seek mental support. Some of you are gonna be lucky enough to have 
uh, people in your support system who will ask you tough questions and really give you space to talk and to express what you're going through and to help you guide you towards solutions. But for a lot of, well, I think everyone needs to experience therapy or coaching at one point in their life. I know that can be a privilege. I understand that. But if you're of the means to afford it, it I know it would have made a huge difference for me to have an outlet to grow in my mental health because I absolutely know without a doubt that my severe insecurities and fear and overwhelming stress when I was injured and I was in a really serious training environment, I know that that had a huge toll on my physical health. During the time when I was more stressed out than I'd ever been in my life, more insecure than I'd ever been in my life, I I was so out of my mind, stressed and insecure that I legitimately thought I had a learning impediment. Like I thought, I thought something was really wrong with me and I had so little trust in myself and I felt so alone. I was living alone at the time. Like I was not getting support. (laughs) And at the time I noticed that I started getting the weirdest freak injuries. Like for instance, there was one time when, um, I hit my knee on the bar and normally that would just hurt. But in my mind, I was so terrified of physical pain and having pain that would stop me from performing well because if I didn't perform well, then I would be chastised and humiliated. So suddenly any sort of physical pain turned into this cycle of fear about being chastised. And, um, Man, yeah, I was going through some really deep stuff that I just wasn't able to get support or help with at the time. So I would tell everybody, especially if you're going through a stressful time or you're going through injury, get help. It is helpful to see a therapist, absolutely. I also think coaching is a fantastic option for a lot of you guys because a lot of you guys are not necessarily struggling with um, like diagnosable like really deep mental health problems, but we just, you just need someone to talk through what's, what's going on and to help or remind you of what you do have within yourself or without or outside of yourself to lean on and to kind of use to go forward, fulfilling your potential and doing your best. Um, I think it is so, so, so important in the healing process and also just to keep yourself well to be taking care of your mental health because it absolutely affects your physical health. I would also tell my younger self and all of you to seek honest advice about knowing when it's time for you to stop pushing yourself and honestly take a break, make some sacrifices. Oh, hey, Alice. Um, in order to take care of yourself. And then also on the other side of that coin, sometimes we need to talk to a medical professional or anyone who has experience to determine like, okay, is this just the time when I push harder? Sometimes that is a total gray area for dancers. And um, I would say when you are asking for that advice and that guidance, which also I want to mention is a part of the guidance I give in the Comeback Stronger course. Like you'll be getting the mental and emotional support you need during an injury, but also you're going to get a guide on how to understand your body's cues and know like generally when, how can you tell when you're pushing too far? How can you tell when it's time to back off in your physical activity? And when is it time to push through some discomfort to gain some strength and keep going? So I just want to mention that it's a part of the course, but for all of you, whenever you're going through something, any sort of pain or injury, ask someone, probably a physical therapist or a doctor, honestly, what they would recommend. And then listen, if they tell you to take time off, take time off. I cannot tell you how many times I either told my doctors what I was going to do. And I, so I would say, I have a show coming up. Here's what I'm going to do. I can't take time off. So what can you do to help me? I wouldn't be open to the idea of 
like, hey, maybe you should take some time off. And if they would tell me to do that, I would just ignore them. <laughs> I would not recommend that because I really paid for it later. I know that as a dancer, you will have to make short-term sacrifices for your long-term health. It is absolutely undeniable you will have to do that, but it is worth it. And I know that still the ballet industry has a long way to go before, um, as a whole, dancers are encouraged to really mind their physical and mental health. But for now, just know that you sometimes like it might be hard dealing with your teachers if they're unsupportive of this, but it is so much better to sacrifice a week of rehearsals and to take time off um, instead of letting your injury fester to the point where you're like me and you get through the whole season and then you have to get surgery and then your career is basically over. So in summary, the points I mentioned are get strong in your fundamental technique, your placement and all that good stuff. Value that before you cheat in your technique and just go for the big tricks and put a lot of um, pressure on your joints that they can't handle over the long term. The next thing is start some sort of cross training. I recommend Pilates. It is so important for having the strength to avoid injury. My next tip was to really mind your nutrition. Um, I don't think I need to say much more about that. It's kind of a given, but do get yourself checked out. The next thing is to get mental support. No matter if you are injured or not, especially if you're not injured, talk to a mental health professional. Help them sort through your fears, your, your stress, your anxieties, because that will really come out in your physiology. You need to address that and to be a whole healthy person um, in order to have longevity and dance. And if you are going through an injury, that is when you really need the mental support. Isolation is something that is actually coming out in the research as being a huge detriment to people's health. If you are socially isolated, which happens to a lot of injured dancers, that usually takes a huge toll on your physical health and you need all the help and support you can get during that time. And no matter if you wanna join the Comeback Stronger course or not, if you're going through an injury, reach out to me. I've supported many dancers through the injury process and helped them come to a place of um, confidence and peace of mind while they're going through the difficult journey. And it actually really has helped them secure a more successful recovery in the end. Again, mental health and physical health they're connected, man, so you gotta, gotta take care of this. My last point was to seek counsel on when you should push and when you should hold back. And be open to listening to your medical professional's honest advice on taking time off. It is worth the short-term sacrifice to help your long-term health. Okay, so as promised, I'm now going to finish this video with talking a bit more about the Come Back Stronger course, which is the online program I've developed for injured dancers to walk them through the biggest hurdles, common confusions, and common pain points that dancers face in the injury recovery process. And I formulated this course to not only um, support dancers through the biggest struggles of an injury, but to actually give them the tangible, practical, detailed information they need to know about how to actually come back stronger, not just the same as you were, but in order to come back stronger as a better artist, stronger mentally and stronger physically. So I give you everything you need in this course to do that, combined with not only the information, but uh, this course also includes a Facebook community group that will be really tight. You'll get to meet other dancers from across the world who might be going through the exact same injury as you. I know community is so important when you're going through this. So that's what I'm providing in this program. There's also an option to do the mindset mastery version of this program, which comes with three private coaching calls with me. That's where you and I can go through deeper um, like maybe big decisions that you are facing right now. Do I continue with dance or do I not? I can help you come to a place of resolution and walking into your decision with confidence. Um, we can also go through releasing deeper like traumatic events or uh, deeper emotions that are coming up in this injury, deeper fears. I could help you release that. Um, 
or I can also help you develop um, an action plan for clearly defining what success looks like for you during this time. And I can help you clearly identify the points and the actions that you would have to take in order to get there. Then I can hold you accountable to that. So having one-on-one -on -one coaching will be really transformative for you if you do the mindset mastery version of the program. Now, um, you can read all about the details of the course on www.comebackstrongercourse.com. It's linked down below. So that's where you can learn everything you need to know about the course. But I also wanted to talk about the invitation I have to 100 lucky dancers in celebration of the launch of this course. So this invitation is particularly to join the course early between November 5th, Tuesday, November 5th, and Tuesday, November 12th, one week leading up to the launch, and you could get early access to modules one and modules two. Um, and not only that, you get access at a $50 discount. So the way that you get this special invitation and coupon code is to follow the link down below, uh, click the link uh, to enter your email address. You'll also get my free PDF guide on how to avoid five common mistakes in the injury recovery process. You're gonna get that free guide and you're going to get an email sent to you with an exclusive coupon code, which there are only a hundred of them. So if you wanna hop on this opportunity, it will be a great time to get early access to the course content and early access to the Facebook page where I will be much more active in that first week with that group of 100 dancers. I have listed some dates down below of some webinars, some free webinars that I will be holding again leading up to the launch and in celebration of the launch because uh, I want to provide as much free content to you guys as possible. I want you guys to get a real taste of what you would be getting inside of this course. Um, so you're going to want to check out the dates for those webinars down below. There will be a link to register for them. So that's really all you need to know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for those of you who are have been so supportive of the launch of this course that I'm uh, developing and putting out in the world so soon. It has been a huge labor of love over the last nine months. I can't wait to finally get this out there. Um, and yeah, I love and appreciate you guys so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.